When we go to animate these cameras, what we're going to do is go up to the cinematics tab here and we're going to set up a level sequence. And you can see there's a master sequence here too, but really all that is is a collection of level sequences. And we're going to do it manually so you can see how it works. So if we add a level sequence, we can just name it. You can just put new folder, level sequences, and we'll call the first one master, save. And then for this one, camera three, we'll do another one. Add level sequence. In level sequences, we'll call this one cam three sequence. So now we have two of them in there. And let's make one more. We can copy, we can just copy this one, duplicate it and call it cam one level sequence because we know that's our other camera in here. Okay, so now let's go into the cam one level sequence. Okay, now what we need to do is add camera one to this level sequence. Add to sequencer, cine camera, actor one. And you can see it puts a camera cuts track here and then it puts the actual camera in here with different parameters that can be animated. Okay, so let's pilot that, act, that actor, camera one, right there. Right now, if we go like this, nothing's happening because that camera's not animated. We can change the working range end here to 0200. And then we can zoom out like this. The red line represents where the end of our video is gonna be. We can make it longer or shorter. So we just dragged the clip. The red line is gonna be where the, the video actually ends. And then we can just animate like you normally would with keyframe animation. So looking through this camera, we can say, okay, the manual focus right now is set to a certain distance. We can put the slider at the beginning and say, let's put it at the beginning, zero, zero, and say keyframe, manual focus distance, add a keyframe here. And you see it adds a node right there. Now, if we go to frame 75 and we change that focus distance, we also want to be in cinematic view mode, which you can do here instead of default viewport. We do cinematic viewport and make sure we're in Cine Camera Actor 1. Now we'll see all the updates as we go. So I put these keyframes in for, for zoom which isn't right, we want it back here. Okay, we're just gonna animate the focal distance, which starts here and then goes further. We can, this is a lot like After Effects where you can jump to the keyframe and let's adjust that so that it's focused on the bamboo. Now when we play this, we'll see it focus from here to there, animated. Just like that. Now, in the meantime, we can be moving the camera slightly. So we can do current focal length. We could just adjust that, or we could actually adjust the transform. The other nice thing is you can add tracks in here. So one thing that I've done before is like, if you click here, you can add different effects from our post-processing into here. So like focus settings, there's already a track for that in here, so we don't need that but we can do post-process settings here. We can go to the camera and do exposure compensation, add a track for that, right? And now we have keyframes for that. We're not gonna use that one here, but we could do current focal length. We'll set a keyframe for that. And then as we go to the end of our video, let's make sure we're seeing the whole thing. Go to here and we're gonna just slowly move to there. So very slow camera move, hit the space bar to play it. And the focus is changing as we go. Okay, nothing too dramatic. You can see that the LODs on our plants outside are not working properly. They're changing as we get closer to them. I think that's an LOD issue, so we'd have to adjust those. 
but there's the animation of the camera. Now, the way that we use the master is we can save this sequencer here and then open our master sequence. This is the master sequence. And what we do here is we go here and say add camera cut track. No, add shot track from M1 camera one sequencer. Now we have our animation from our first sequencer in the master sequencer. And if we make this much longer, like 500, and then we go like this, we can now see that we have this camera cut or this shot from sequence one now being referenced in here. So what does that mean? If we go to camera three sequencer and then add the camera, camera three into here, then we'll have two different camera cuts and we'll put them together in the master sequence. So let's go to Cine Actor 3. Here we are in Cine Actor 3 and we can just animate. What do we want to animate here? Let's say it's a transform and we'll say the location. X location has a keyframe there. And we'll just do an easy move over to there. Doesn't look great. Doesn't even look good. Maybe that's because we're in game mode. Okay, so that's how it's really gonna look right there. Okay, so I'd actually wanna animate like the exposure as we get further out, like right here. So let's look at that as an example. So we can add a track for that. Post-process settings, camera, lens camera, exposure compensation. So right here, we'll, we'll leave it as is until it gets right here. And then as we get over here, we will go higher exposure. Let's see how that looks. Cool. Okay, now if we save this, close it down, and then go back into our master sequencer. Now we can add another shot. from the camera three sequencer. Now we have both shots in here. You wanna drag it so it's not overlapping with this one. And we'll wanna make sure this goes from here to here. You can also do things like add transition tracks in here if you want. So or you could use a fade track where it could go from black or from nothing to solid black. And then back into video again. Right, you could do that. I would only do this if I didn't plan on, on doing any editing later in like After Effects or Premiere or something, but I usually would be doing that, so I don't worry about doing getting too fancy with my editing in here. The important thing is I have these different clips that I can now render out. And to generate this, we would just do this. And it's not gonna be that pretty, just an example, but this shows you the tools you need to make really cool animations and they render in real time, that's the best part. So render this movie or video to file. You can go here, output format, video sequence, 30 frames per second. You can make it full HD if you want, or even 4K. You can turn off use compression if you want higher quality. And that's basically it. You can save it to a JPEG sequence, which is what I typically do. In this case, to be able to show you guys, I'll just do a video sequence. If you're taking it into After Effects, then I would usually use a JPEG sequence because that will basically just come in as video into After Effects. Okay, a few other options down here that we don't need to worry about. And then we can just capture the movie. Uh, right here is where you tell it where to go. And I'll just, it's going to save in my projects, saved video, and we'll just capture. Everything will have to be saved first, and then it'll render out. Okay, now let's just uh, watch our video here. It's pretty cool. It rendered in, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. You can see we still have that LOD issue going on here. These things get more dense as you get closer to them. This one looks nice and crisp and clean. I mean, it's very high resolution. It's very good. 
kind of a boring camera movement, but that's it. So we have a movie rendered in real time, approaching something similar to photorealism, and pretty cool. And the awesome thing is that we can generate any still shot we want, any animation we want, quite easily. And not only that, but we can, later in this course, we're going to add in parts where we can navigate around the whole scene with our desktop computer, or even with VR. So this is a very versatile file once we get it all set up. We can generate anything we need, and it's quick and fast in real time. So that's how you use the level sequencer to make movies out of your scene.